Hi ladies, I'm going to take you on a tutorial through how to solve the genetic practice problems. I'm going to break this down into three parts. So this part is going to look at how to solve more probability problems. So if you're trying to determine the gametes possible from the following genotypes, what you need to do and what you need to think about is the law of segregation. So remember that each parent can give one, they can't give both of their alleles for a specific gene. So if my phenotype is big A, little a, during meiosis, the whole process is, the whole purpose of doing it is to make gametes that have half the amount of genetic material. So you can give half of your alleles, you can't give both. So that means that one gamete is going to end up with A, the other gamete is going to end up with little a. So the possible gametes for this individual right here would be a um, and little a. The possible gametes for the next individual who is homozygous dominant and heterozygous for those two genes. Uh, if you look any homozygous individual, each gamete is going to contain the same allele because they're identical. So every gamete is going to have a big A, half of them are going to have a big B, the other half are going to have a big A, and a little b. Next individual, same thing, homozygous dominant. Okay, they could only give big A, only give big B. Note that there aren't two A's in each gamete, there's only one. There's not two B's in each gamete, there's only one. Okay, uh, next individual, heterozygous, big A, little a means they can give big A or little a, they both big B's here, so they can, it doesn't really matter. So big A, big B, little a, big B. Next individual, okay, when you're looking at three genes, this one's a pretty simple one, but you wanna make sure that you have an A, a B, and a C in each gamete. In this case, there's only one possible way to do that, okay? You'll either get big A or big A, big B or big B, big C or big C. This individual is a little bit more complicated. Okay, what you want to think about here is because I have two big Bs, each gamete is going to have a big B. And then you have a variety of different ways you can do big A and little a and big C and little C. So let's go through and try to figure out the number of possibilities. So I can give big A, big B, which has to be in all of them, or big C. I could give big A, big B because I have to, and then little c, that'd be a different possibility. I can give little a, big B, big C, and little a, big B, little c. If you're having trouble with the heterozygous traits, sometimes I, um, especially if there's two, this is a really nice trick. So you can do a, a, c, c. We call this foiling. Okay, so you're going to have an A with a big C. You're going to have an A, big A with a little C. You're going to have a little A with a big C and a little A with a little C. Note that all of them have big B. Okay. How many genetically... Oops, went all over. Did it again. How many genetically different kinds of gametes can each individual... Uh, make with the following genotypes. Okay, so if I have big A and big A, there's only one possibility. So the only thing that they can do is make A. Okay, remember you can only give one allele, not both. Same thing here, one allele, not both. Okay, because they're identical, you can only produce one genetically different type. Big A, little a, you're going to be able to produce two. Okay, you're going to be able to produce some gametes with big A, some gametes with little a. For this individual here, you're also going to be able to make two. Note that you have big B, big B, so each gamete is going to contain big B. So I could have big A, big B. I could have little a, big B. Okay, here's another case where that foiling would come into play. So A, A, B, B. I have A with B, A with little b, little a with big B, little a with little b. So I'm going to have four possibilities here.
Okay, what's the probability that an individual with the genotype of big G, little g, big P, little p will produce a gamete that carries the G allele? Okay, so let's look at the G allele. So if this is my genotype, make it a little bit bigger, maybe not make a B. Okay, make it into a P. Okay, what I want for the G allele, what I want to focus on is just this area. So I can either give big G or I can give little g. Okay, so that would be a 50% probability. Um, or you could say one half, which is totally fine there too. Uh, G and P allele. So to give the little g, that's a one half. To give the big P allele, that's also one half, because I could either get bigger, bigger little. So you have one half times one half, and then you get one fourth. Big G and little g. Okay, this is not possible, so this is going to be zero. Remember that these alleles must or must segregate during gamete formation. So each parent can only give one allele for each gene, not both. So this is the law of segregation. Um, little g and little p. Same thing here. Little g, one half. Little p, one half. One fourth. Okay. In humans, brown eyes are dominant over blue. Okay. Note that eyes are very much more complicated than. Um, just one gene. Usually you can think about it in terms of one gene, whether pigment's being deposited or not. So whether you have dark pigment or lack of pigment being blue. So a brown-eyed man is going to marry a blue-eyed woman, and they have three children, two of whom are brown-eyed, and one is blue-eyed. So if blue is recessive, what must be the woman's genotype? So let's use like little beads here. Okay, so if she's recessive, Okay, that means she has two, or if blue is recessive, that means she has to have two recessive alleles in order to express it. So the gametes that she can produce, she can only produce one type of gamete. Okay, she can give B or B. They're identical to each other. Um, if a man has brown eyes but had a blue-eyed child, what must his genotype be? So because he has brown eyes, we know that he has the dominant allele, but because he has a child with blue eyes, we know that he must be a carrier for that blue-eyed allele. So what gametes can you make? You can either get, produce a gamete with B or with little b. So let's show that pun and square. Dad over here, mom here. Note that when I'm setting up a pun and square, each of these spots right here is going to represent a gamete. Okay, so this is a gamete with a little sperm. And here's two eggs. Note that those are unique gametes. So every time you set up a combination, those are the gametes. B, 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 B. Okay, so this would be my Punnett square. What's the probability of having a child with blue eyes? In order to have blue eyes, you'd have to be little b, little b. There are two, probabil two possible ways to do that here. Um, so either two-fourths, one-half, it's always good to reduce. So one half of the time, you will have a child with blue eyes. What's the probability of having a child that's heterozygous? Okay, heterozygous meaning you have two different alleles. Okay, one, two, so two out of four, or one half. What's the probability of having a child, or having a boy with blue eyes? Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more tricky because you have to consider the probability of having a boy and the probability of having blue eyes. So we know the probability of having blue eyes is one half from before. The probability of having a boy is also one half. So a boy with blue eyes would be one fourth. Note I multiply because these are independent of each other. Having blue eyes and being a boy, two independent events. What's the probability of having two boys with blue eyes? Okay, so we already figured out the probability of having a um, a boy with blue eyes, which is one-fourth. 
So having two boys, okay, these are independent events from each other. So one fourth, okay, that I got from right here, which is the probability of having a boy with blue eyes, times the same probability of having another boy with blue eyes. So the probability of having two boys with blue eyes is going to happen one sixteenth of the time. So what's the probability of having a boy with blue eyes or a girl with blue eyes? So this is where you have to think about um, ors or ands. If you see and, it's going to indicate multiplication, okay, because there can be two independent events from each other. Or means that I have more possible ways of uh, having this occur, this event occur, so it's going to be a higher probability. So a boy with blue eyes, okay, we know that that's one-fourth of the time. Okay, remember, one half times one half, and then we want to know a girl with brown eyes. Okay, and we're going to add these probabilities here. Oh, I don't know where that just went. We're going to add these probabilities here because of this or. Okay, this is the addition rule. So a girl, the probability of having a girl is one half. The probability of having brown eyes is also one half. Okay, so I'm basically adding one fourth plus one fourth together. It's going to equal one fourth here. And what I'm going to get is two fourths, always reduced, so one half probability of having, or 50% chance of having a girl with brown eyes or a boy with blue eyes. Any, so if you have any questions about these, please make sure you come see me and um, see the next video for the next couple of problems.